Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Uh, today we're going to be evaluating the integral from zero to infinity of sine squared x over x squared dx. Pause the video, try it for yourself using traditional techniques. Um, you won't be successful. Um, so a couple things to note right off the bat. Um, in our previous video, we showed that the integral from zero to infinity of sine of ax over x dx is equal to pi over two, as shown right there. Um, go ahead and watch that video if you'd like an explanation of that. Um, so we'll just get going. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, create a function of t that's equal to zero, the integral from zero to infinity of sine squared of tx over x squared dx. So basically I'm just inserting a t into there and calling it a function of t, which it will be. Um, so now what we're gonna do is use the Leibniz rule over there um, to direct, to take the partial derivative, I'm sorry, to take the derivative with respect to t of f of t by simply taking the partial derivative with respect to t of this part right here. And what you'll get is that f prime of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of two sine tx cosine tx over x dx. Um, I hope you can see that when you take a derivative of this expression right here with respect to t, you bring down the two giving you two sine of tx times the derivative of sine tx, which is cosine tx, times the derivative of tx with respect to t, which is x. And that's why you only have that x in the bottom there, uh, because that x will cancel with one of the x's down there, leaving you with this. Also noted is that this expression, 2 sine tx, cosine tx, is equal to the sine of 2tx. That's from trigonometry. Um, and um, as, as you'll see, as you can see, um, if we replace a with, uh, with 2t, we have this form, which is pi over 2. So f prime of t is simply e equal to pi over 2. We're not interested in f prime of t, however, we're interested in f of t. So integrating f prime of t gives you pi t over 2 plus c. Using our initial values up here and plugging zero in for t, we will find that zero is equal to zero plus c, or zero is equal to c, um, allowing us to arrive at a final um, definition of f of t, f of t being equal to pi over two times t. Now also noted right here that f evaluated at one will give us our original integral, as you can see if we plug in 1 for t, we get sine squared x over x squared dx, which is what we wanted to find in the first place. So all we need to do to find our answer is plug in 1 to f of t. As you can see, that'll give us pi over 2. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed that.